I want you to know today that Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to speak to you. He wants you to hear His voice. He wants you to see Him. He wants you to be sensitive to His Holy Spirit. But there are some conditions that have to be right in order for our ears and our eyes to be open. You know, Jesus told this parable in uh, Matthew chapter 13 and he said in uh, verse 3 he said a farmer went out to sow a seed and as he was scattering the seed some fell on the path and the birds came and ate it up some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to these people in parables? And he replied these words in verse 11. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was thrown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. What was sown on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. What was sown among the thorns is the man who hears the word. But the words of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it. Making it unfruitful. What, what, but what was sown on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands that he produced a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Let's ask God to speak through his word today. Lord Jesus, I ask you to open up hearts and, and minds, open up ears that they would hear your word tonight, today. Lord, I pray that you would speak your words and only your words through me. Help me not to go off on any tangents, 
But Lord, I pray that you would receive glory and you would be the one who is seen today. And I thank you for your life-changing words spoken. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, he gave a parable and he's talked about a farmer and he talked about the different soil conditions. He talked about sowing. He talked about scattering seed along the path and having birds come and eat it. He talked about sowing uh, out in the hot sun where there was no, the plants didn't have good roots. The roots were just on top of the ground, just barely in the dirt. He talked about how they withered and died. And then he talked about plants that were sown on good ground, fertile ground, open ground. He talked about how it produced a mighty, mighty crop. You know, in order for you and I to hear the words of the Lord, we have to cultivate. We have to be cultivated. We have to have our hearts prepared and ready. We have to have our ears open to what God would say to us. And you know something? Satan will do whatever he can to try to put earplugs in, to try to keep you from hearing he will do everything he can to try to, to poke your eyes out or cover your eyes so that you can't see what God is doing. A lot of times, a lot of times we can become spiritually deaf. And what is it that can cause us to be spiritually deaf? It's the things that we allow into our lives and that we focus on. In Isaiah, Isaiah verse 10 and, and cha or chapter t 6 and verse 10, it says, Make the heart of this people callous, make their ears dull, and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. So, if our hearts are calloused and our eyes are closed, we will, spiritually, we will not see and hear the word of the Lord. We will not be able to hold on to the word of the Lord. We will not have faith to be changed, faith to be healed. So, then he goes on in Jeremiah 6 and verse 10. He says, to whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them and they find no pleasure in it. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. Think about what's going on in the world today. I don't want you speaking the word of Jesus to me. Don't you dare tell me what that book says about my homosexuality. Or maybe I should say. Don't you dare say. Don't you dare tell me what that book says about my homosexuality. It's my body. It's my choice. I can do what I want to do. Government officials say, let's take down the Ten Commandments. Let's take down anything that anyone can find offensive. And you know something? There's a lot of things they're doing. I find it offensive that they want to take the Ten Commandments down. I find it offensive that they don't want to mention the name of Jesus in public. Amen. That they don't want to pray before making vital decisions that affect me and this nation and my family. Amen. I find it offensive. But it says that their ears are closed so they cannot hear and the word of the Lord is offensive to them and they find no pleasure in it. Jeremiah 6.10 It 
Their ears are stopped up because of the condition of the heart. Their eyes are covered because of the condition of their heart. Ezekiel 12, 2. He says, Son of man, you are living among a rebellious people. They have eyes to see, but do not see. And ears to hear, but do not hear. For they are a rebellious people. All around us we see rebellion. Rebellion against authority. Rebellion against parents. Rebellion against society. Rebellion against law enforcement. And utterly rebellion against God. And what is the result of the rebellion? The result is this. Eyes that should be able to see but don't see. And ears that should be able to hear but do not hear. Why? Because of rebellion. Why do you think Satan wants to tell our young people, hey, you're getting 18, you're getting old enough, you don't have to listen to your parents, you can go out and do your own thing, it's your body, it's your choice. You don't have to listen to anybody else. What you want to do is fine. Why do you think Satan tries to tell people, you know that Bible, that... You know, that, that Bible you've been hearing about all your life, it's outdated. It doesn't relate to you today. Why do you think Satan wants to put this, this stuff in people, this rebellious spirit? Because rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And the Bible says, don't have anything to do with anyone who practices or has anything to do with witchcraft. It's appalling to God. And even the very act of rebellion is the same thing as witchcraft. And do you know what the result of it is? A hard heart and blind eyes and deaf ears. Amen. And then in uh, Zechariah 7 verse 11. It says, but they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turned their backs and stopped up their ears. When you think of stubbornness, what do you think of? Rebellion. Stubbornness is rebellion. So stubbornly, they turned their backs and stopped up their ears. In 2 Timothy 4, verse 4, it says, they will turn their eyes away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So following false, false doctrine, following, following things that are against the Word of God, things that society makes and says are popular. New age thing, which is big today. People looking for something to satisfy them. Some people looking for answers. Looking for something to give them peace. But everything that we do that takes us away from God goes down to a spirit of rebellion. So what causes deafness? What causes blindness? When it comes to hearing the voice of the Lord and seeing God. Number one. First thing I'm going to give you is rebellion. When we rebel against authority, that hardens our heart. And that keeps us from, that can keep us from hearing or seeing God. That's why it's so dangerous. All these parents that are teaching their kids not to respect the police and the authorities. Every authority has been placed placed. You know, where it is and in, in the place that it's in by God. God raises up kings and pulls them down. 
So when we teach, when people teach their kids not to respect the authorities, the you know, law enforcement or whatever, they're teaching them to be rebellious. So they're teaching them to go against the Lord. So rebellion, number one, can harden your heart. Stop up your ears, cause you to be blind. Keep you from seeing and hearing God. Number two, unbelief. Unbelief. Your Satan is even, he's tried to tell some people, well, the Bible's not relevant today, or he tries to lie to them. So, oh, it's been changed so many times, it's not even accurate today. But I'm going to tell you something. It's been proved, and if you do your research, that if you look at, go back to the original manuscripts, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, and you know, the original Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, where the word was written in, and you compare the translations, you know, the good translations, you look at them, it's been proven that there's very few discrepancies. There's very few things that have been changed. And the things that have been changed are usually, they don't, they're not something that's going to affect the meaning. They're just, you know, human error and, and uh, copying, but they don't affect the meaning. You know, it still stays true to the letter. So Satan will try to tell you, well, the, you know, the Bible we use today is not accurate. And he'll try to tell you that God's not real. He'll try to tell you God doesn't love you and God doesn't want to work in your circumstances. And he'll do everything he can to try to cause you to fear and doubt and have unbelief. And all of those things harden your heart, which causes deafness, the ears not being able to hear the Spirit of God causes blindness. You not be able to see God. So rebellion, number one, uh, unbelief. The third thing I want to give you today is unforgiveness. Do you know there's people that 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 have made up their mind that because somebody hurt them when they were a child or said or did something to them, they cannot and will not forgive them, and they're going to. They've made up their mind. They want to take that thing to the grave. And what it's doing is it's causing bitterness and pain and strife in their life and even in relationships. And if you hold on to that enough, it causes your heart to be hardened. And then you cannot see and cannot hear the voice of God because no matter, even if somebody has killed someone that you love or, or taken your innocence away from you, if you hold on to that and you become hard through unbelief, then, then you get to the place where you can't even receive forgiveness yourself in your life. And you, know, you become blind to the fact that you have this unforgiveness in you and, and you can't receive from God. Can't see, can't hear. So unforgiveness can harden your heart. And the fourth thing that I want to give you, and I think this is probably the last one I'm going to mention today, is sin. Do you know that there is, there's people out there, there's people that are actually teaching that because of the grace of God that you can go out and do in your body whatever you want to do because God forgives and what matters is your heart anyway. And that's true. God does forgive and what matters is the condition of your heart. But I'm going to tell you something. Anything you're doing out of rebellion because you are under grace and you know that, well, it's my body, my choice. I can do this, you know, all this stuff. Anything you're doing is becomes an act of rebellion if you know that the Word of God has said don't do it. And so sin, going out, anything that you do that that is out of rebellion. Anything that you do that you know that God's word has addressed and said, you know, you need to stay away from these things. Don't imitate the pagans. Don't imitate, when you go into the land I'm giving you, don't do what they do. You know, stay separate. You know, the word says, come out from among them and, and be separate. You're, you know, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. So anything we do that, that causes us to, to look like that we're conforming to the world, whether we do it in the name of grace or not, 
is an act of rebellion. And that can actually harden our heart and it can keep us from being sensitive and hearing, hearing the voice of God or seeing, seeing God. So those are four things that can keep you from having open ears and open eyes. And that's rebellion, unbelief, unforgiveness, and willful sin in your life. But Jesus, you know, he, he talked about you know the uh, the one who has the seed stolen stolen before it produced fruit. He talked about the one who wasn't deep in him, and so he you know they wilted, and the plant died. He also talked about the one who was fertile, and you know something. What is it that makes us, what is it that plants us in fertile ground? What is fertile ground? Fertile ground is when our lives are, are placed in Christ. Fertile ground is when we are grounded, when we have the Word of God in us because we meditate on the Word of God. We feed on the Word of God. And we align ourselves up with Christ through the Word of God. And uh, so what is it that opens up our ears so we can hear and opens our eyes so we can see so that we can produce a crop? In Proverbs 8, 34, it says, Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. So how is it that we can be good, have good ground to, to be planted in? How is it that we can be solid in the Lord and we can be fruitful? By listening to the word of the Lord. By focusing on Christ first and foremost. And by waiting on the Lord. Placing ourselves in a position to wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. So blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors and waiting on me. So the one who, who listens to the word and, and takes time to wait and meditate on the Lord and the word of the Lord, spending time in his presence, they're going to have open ears and open eyes. Proverbs 15 and verse 31. It says, He who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. So, being open and willing even to be rebuked from time to time. I don't like to be rebuked. I don't want somebody to tell me I'm wrong. Come on now. You know, God uses people in our lives. I mean, I know that every person who comes and tries to give you a rebuke is not from the Lord. Sometimes you'll have people rebuking you for stuff when you're trying to follow the Lord and, and you you know you've heard from the Lord and somebody will try to tell you you're, you're off, you're wrong. But if you know that you're in line with the Word of God, you know that God's been speaking to you and you're doing what He told you then that's a rebuke that you cast aside. But sometimes God will send a rebuke to you to tell you, you know, if you get your eyes off the Lord and you're heading down a path that's going to lead you to destruction, or maybe you're, you're holding unforgiveness in your heart, sometimes God will send people in your path to give you a rebuke to get you back on that road to repentance and that road to, to total surrender and focus on God. So the person who listens to a rebuke is considered wise. You, know, you take the rebuke that you know is from God and you apply it to your life. You reject the one that you know doesn't line up with what God's telling you. But always be open to pray and seek the Lord to ask Him, is that rebuke from Him or not? So be willing to accept criticism. Yeah, that's the second way 
that we can have our ears open and our eyes open to hear and see God. Ezekiel, or excuse me, Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 1, it says, Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. In other words, when you come to church, when you go into the house of the Lord, when you go to worship the Lord, make sure the condition of your heart is right. Make sure you're there for the right motives. Make sure you're there to seek the Lord and, and Him only. Don't just mouth the words of the songs. Go with your heart open. Pour your heart out to the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God with everything that's in you. Who may... Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may enter into His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. That's the scripture that God gave me to name this church. Pure heart. So guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fool. In other words, if you, when you come into the church, make sure your ears are open to the Lord. By preparing your heart, making sure the condition of your heart is right. And the fourth, fourth thing that can prepare, open your ears and open your eyes to hear the voice of the Lord so you can be fruitful is Luke 8, verse 15. It says, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by preserving, produce a crop. A noble and good heart. How do we have a noble and good heart? Is it by having unbelief in our lives? Is it by living our lives in rebellion against authority? Is it by living with unforgiveness? Is it by going out and doing the very things that we know that God doesn't like, that Jesus, the things that Jesus died on the cross to, to forgive and to do away with? Is that how we have a noble and good heart? No, the way we have a noble and good heart is by coming and surrendering our lives completely to Him, by opening our heart completely to Him and saying, Lord, search me and know me. Find out if there's any offensive way in me. And Lord, I surrender those things to You. Give me a pure heart. Give me clean hands. Give me a pure heart, Lord. I don't want anything in me that even resembles something that you're displeased with. So the good soul stands for those who have a noble and good heart. You hear the word, retain it, and by persevere and produce a crop. Persevere. Persevere in the things of the Lord. Persevere in seeking the Lord. Persevere and meditate on His word and and being obedient to Him. And then James 1 and verse 19. This is the last one I'm going to give you. Another, the way, another way, the last way that we can make sure our ears are open, our eyes are open to hear the word of the Lord is this. James said, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to become angry. If our eyes are in the wrong place, if our eyes are in the wrong place, our heart's not going to be fully devoted to the Lord. And when our heart is, if, when our heart is not fully surrendered to the Lord, when we're not living completely for the Lord, first and foremost, when our eyes are on ourselves, guess what? When somebody starts saying something, we're going to be quick to start talking. We're going to be quick to interrupt. We're not going to be open to listen. And when somebody says something that we don't particularly like, we're going to be quick to get offended. We're going to get our nose out of joint. And we're going to get upset. We're going to get mad and angry. But if we're going to keep 
if we're going to be good ground, if we're going to be a, if we're going to be a plant that God can use, that will produce fruit, then we need to be so surrendered and dedicated to the Lord that we're quick to listen. Do you know that? Do you know there's a reason that God gave you two ears and only one mouth? God gave you two ears so that you would listen more than you speak. So when we are quick to listen, but slow to speak, you know, sometimes if we take the time to listen fully to what is being said, we won't get offended because we'll take get it in the right context. But if we if we speak if we speak, the minute we start hearing something, we you know we don't we don't hear it right, and we start speaking and, and you know blasting somebody out or getting upset, then those things will keep us from hearing God. That it'll it'll stop up our ears and it'll close our eyes so that we can't see and hear God's voice. But God wants you to be open today. God wants you to hear Him. He wants you to know Him. In verse four, in uh, chapter thirteen of Matthew, in verse fourteen, Jesus said that the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled when the people couldn't hear and couldn't see. He said, "You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving." For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. And they have closed their eyes. Why does Satan want your heart to be callous? Why does he want your eyes closed? Because it says otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts. And turn and I would heal them. Do you know there's a lot some people aren't being healed because their ears are closed and their eyes are calloused. Their hearts are calloused, their eyes are closed. They're blind. But when we, when our ears are open, our eyes are open, when we see, when the condition of our heart is right, then we're in a position to receive what the Lord wants to do in and through us. But Jesus said these words, verse 16, and I'm getting ready to close. He said, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Blessed. Why were their eyes open and their, their ears opened? Why could they see and hear? Because their hearts were open to everything God had to them. They came and surrendered their lives to the Lord. They wanted Him more than anything else. And that's what, that's what God wants for you today. He wants you to get to the place to get beyond yourself. And come to the place of complete and total surrender to Him. And He said, uh, He said in verse 21, Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to read the last part of this again. It says, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth. Many prophets and righteous men longed to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but do not hear it. Listen then to what the, the parable of the sower means. He said, when anyone, hear, when, the, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. And this is a seed sown along the path. That's why Satan will do everything he can to keep you from understanding the Word. He'll distract you. He'll, he'll get you where your mind's somewhere else. He'll get you to where you know, you're, you know, you're closed off because of unbelief or unforgiveness or sin or rebellion. And he'll do everything he can to keep you from hearing because it's only as you hear that you're changed. And the seed that was sown along the path 
was what was sown on rocky places. And it's the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. Why does, why does Satan want to keep you from studying the word of God? Why does he want to keep you from praying and worshiping God? Because it's only through studying and meditating on the word and spending time with the, with the Lord and his presence that you're going to grow and change. And that he doesn't want you to have good soil, to be good ground that the roots can take. For your, he doesn't want you to have good roots. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble and persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. How many people have we seen come to the Lord in revivals or whatever? They seem to be all on fire for a while. And then lo and behold, all of a sudden they fall away and they go back and become more son of the devil than they were before. It's because they had no roots. But he said in verse 22, he said, what was sown among thorns is the man who hears the word, but the words of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. Do you know that because of keeping up with the Joneses, a lot of times God will get people so strapped thinking they got to have this or that, that they get so far in debt that they can't even see the light of day, and they can't, you know, it keeps them from being focused on the Lord. It takes them away from fellowship with God's people. Keeps them from being, bringing their supply, the gifts that God put in them to be able to use with other people to help the body be strong. And so the deceitfulness of wealth and the worries of life come and, and make it unfruitful. And that keeps people from being what God's created them to be. But verse 23, it says, But what was sown on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. How do we understand it? By having all the conditions right. By getting rid of all rebellion through surrender completely to Christ. By, by getting the word in our heart and focusing on Jesus so, and, and seeing the Father through Jesus so that we don't have unbelief in us. The more you hear the word, the more faith is, is built up in you. The more we forgive and so our heart is soft and pliable in the Lord's hands. And also the more we come and seek after the Lord, the less we want of the things of this world, which is sin. And when we have the right conditions, says the one who, this, this, but what was sown on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands that he produced a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Satan wants you to wither and die. God wants you to live. He wants you to be full of his life and produce his fruit. Who is it that shall inherit the kingdom of God? Fruit bearers. Amen. Only those who are planted in God, planted through Jesus Christ, in Christ. And I want to challenge you today to come and surrender all to him. I want to challenge you today to ask God to help you to know if you're sidetracked by the cares of this life. I want you to ask God to, to show you if you've got any unforgiveness or unbelief. And I want to ask, I want you to come right now and if you know there's sin in your life, there's things that you need to confess to the Lord. Things that He said in His Word that his child should stay away from. Do you know why he tells us to stay away from certain things? Because he knows what's going to harm us and what's not. I want to challenge you to come and yield completely to the Lord today. And let's ask God to, to make us good ground. In the name of Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, open up our hearts and our minds to receive Father God, I pray that you would show us if, if there's a rebellious spirit in us and that you would drive it out as we come and surrender to you. Lord, help us to forgive those that we need to forgive, even help us forgive ourselves. Lord, I pray that any unbelief would be driven out right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I pray that, that 
all willful sin, Lord, that you would show it to us. Lord, even things that are in our life that we didn't even realize was sin. Lord, unforgiveness is sin, and we confess it to you right now. and ask you to forgive us. In the name of Jesus. Rebellion is sin. We ask you to forgive us in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we come to you and we yield our lives afresh. And we ask you to change us. And to transform us. More and more into your image. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As a deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Come on, let's worship him wherever you're at. Let's worship him. Coming is an act of surrender. Let's come and let's worship him. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. Come on, as a deer. As a deer panted for the water so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Come on, you alone are my heart's desire, I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship Thee. And I long to worship Thee. Lord, You are our heart's desire, and we long to worship You. We ask You to come and change us, Lord. Transform us to be more like You. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us a pure heart today. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Thank you, everybody, for turning, tuning in. If God's touched your life, send us a message and let us know what God's done in you. If you'd like to support the ministry of Pure Heart, go to pureheartchurch.com and there's links to follow. Or you can send a, a check or send a response to Pure Heart Family Church at P.O. Box 1974, Albemarle, 19, or 28002. Thank you and God bless you. And we'll see you Sunday. We'll see you Wednesday evening.